Hello, dear students. I am the instructor of uh, corporate finance or financial management. And here today we will try to learn the chapter number two, whether from uh, Brigham book or if you try to understand it from the Rose Westerfield Jordan RWJ book. The chapter two name is financial statements, taxes and cash flows. We will so we will try our best to understand chapter two. The name is financial statements, taxes, and cash flows. So let's start with the key concept, which will try, which we will try to understand in this chapter, are known as the key concepts and skills. There are four concepts that will that we will try to focus. Number one is know the difference between book value and market value. We will try to have a look at the difference between these two values, which are very important from decision-making point of view. What is the book value and what is market value? The book value um, normally always differs from the market value. We will try to know the difference between accounting income and cash flow. So what's it, what are the, there are two types of incomes. Uh, one is the cash flow basis and the other one is uh, accounting basis income. So we'll try to look into deep how they differ. Number three, know the difference between average and marginal tax rates. So we'll try to look into the understanding of uh, the two types of tax rates. Number one is average tax rate and number two is marginal tax rates. And number four point is know how to determine a firm's cash flow from its financial statements. So we will try to calculate the cash flow from the financial statements. So these are the four basic key concepts which are included in this chapter. Now let's discuss the chapter outline. It includes the balance sheet, the income statement, taxes, and cash flow. So balance sheet is also known as the statement of financial position of a business. Income statement is also known as the statement of comprehensive income. Taxes, uh, we'll try to look into the calculation of different types of taxes and cash flow statement and how is it made and why are they so much important for making, for making decisions of the business. the balance sheet here we will try to understand some basic concepts related to balance sheet so three miss three main points we will try to cover in this slide number one is the balance sheet is a snapshot of the firm's assets and liabilities at a given point in time it means that balance sheet gives you a snapshot snapshot means a one point of time snapshot mean a one a one time picture a one a, a picture that depicts your position at a point in time your position may be changing in the next time in the next moment so it is showing your moment or your position at a given point of time okay of the firm's assets and liabilities at a given point in time so it is taking a snapshot just click of what of the assets and liabilities of the business at a point in time assets are listed in order of decreasing liquidity whenever we write the assets in the balance sheet we write the most liquid assets in the first place and then less liquid, less liquid, less liquid, less liquid. 
So whenever we go from up to down, the assets are written on the decreasing liquidity basis. It means that whenever we go down in the list of assets, as soon as we go down, we see that uh, the liquidity will be decreasing. So what is actually liquidity? Let's, let's try to understand. The liquidity means ease of conversion to cash without significant loss of value. The easiness, the easiness with which an assets can be converted into cash without significant loss of value. So liquidity is a measure whenever you go into the market, if the asset can be sold easily into the market, it means it, it, it has more liquid. This asset is more liquid. For example, you go to the market uh, with the debit card and you can you can easily use your ATM to get some cash and you pay it. So it is very near to cash. It is most liquid asset. So uh, another another important example is, for example, you have you have the price bonds in the context of uh, Pakistan or India. You have the price bonds. You go to the market. You've got some shopping, and you can easily uh, give that price bonds to the shopkeeper, and he will give you the exchange of value of something in return. So. And for example, you also take the gold, gold with yourself and you, and you can sell your gold into the market easily. Uh, so gold is also considered as a liquid asset, a very liquid asset. But remember, uh, keep in mind that, for example, if you go to the market to, 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 to sell your car, so it becomes difficult to sell it quickly at a good price because you will have to wait some time. It is fortunate, very fortunate, over a few times it happens that your, your car will be sold at a certain price uh, within a moment, within moments. But normally it happens that you go to the market or you take, the, take some pics or you post, post them on the OLX, then you, have some uh, customers, they call you and you have some bargaining and then the payments will be settled later. But in, in normal cases, uh, uh, or for example, if you wanna go to liquidate or to sell your house and you wanna carry, you, you want to sell it quickly, but it will take some time to get a good price in the market. So all the assets are written in the balance sheet in a decreasing liquidity basis. I will explain you further in detail in the coming slides. What is balance sheet identity? This is the third important point of this slide. The balance sheet identity refers to the accounting equation. It is also known as the balance sheet equation or uh, accounting equation. It is known as assets is equal to liabilities plus stockholders equity. So assets must always be equal to liabilities plus stockholders equity. So on the left side, we have assets. On the right side, we have liabilities and stockholders equity. Assets mean these are the financial resources of the business. The business can use these financial resources, financial or non-financial resources. All these types of resources a business can use to generate revenue. Liabilities. Liabilities are the debts or obligations of the company. So liabilities are those payments that the company will pay to the creditors in the future. For example, if the company has taken some loan from banks, these loans will be paid in future. If these loans are payable within one year, these are known as short-term liabilities. Short-term liabilities also include salaries of employees which are payable every month and which are given 12 times in a year to the employees. And then we have utility bills payable. It includes um, 
gas bills, telephone bills, water bills, and electricity electricity bills. So all these types of bills are are if are not paid but yet payable, and you have utilized all the electricity and all the utilities during the month, then it is your obligation to pay the bills. So these are known as liabilities. Stockholders equity mean the the part of the shareholders in the company. Equity means shares or part of the shareholders or owners of the company. So this is known as balance sheet identity. In the next slide, we will look into the structure, the basic structure of the balance sheet. So on the left side, we have, you can see, on the left side, we have current assets, current assets, and in the same column, we have fixed assets. So as I have already discussed, current assets are known as the most liquid assets. It means that they can be sold and purchased in the market quickly basis, on quickly basis. That's why they are written on the, uh, on the first hand side or upper side of the asset. If we go down after current assets, we write fixed assets. Fixed assets are all those assets which are less liquid as compared to current assets and they cannot be easily sold or bought in the market it, they can contain both tangible assets tangible mean all those assets that have some physical existence physical existence means like land or building or property or any other plant or automobiles or any such thing that has some physical existence and that can be used to generate revenue for example machinery is a very big tangible asset intangible assets all those assets which do not have any physical existence but they are also helpful in generating revenue the most important intangible fixed asset is like you can say goodwill of the company or the patent rights of the company or copyrights of the company so for example us has many pharmaceutical companies that sell that sell their patents to companies outside of us or overseas companies so they will be able to produce their medicine but in the prescribed manner in any other country in the world so these pharmaceutical companies have lots of patents on their asset side these space these patents generate regular revenue for the company so all these type of patents are known as intangible assets like Another important intangible asset, intangible fixed asset, can be the copyright, the copyrights. If a movie is sold to different uh, cinemas or different, um, you know, channels, then they purchase the copyrights of that specific movie and they earn the revenue on that basis. The copyrights are the assets of the business as well. On the right side, we have current liabilities. The liabilities which, which are payable within one year or less than one year are known as current liabilities. For example, I have already discussed that salaries payable, utilities bills payable, and any other accounts payable which are, which are the obligations of the business to pay them within one year or less than one year are known as current liabilities. Then we have long-term debts. All those debts or obligations which are payable to the other creditors for more than one year are known as long-term debts. For example, if a business has taken a loan from a bank, from a bank of five years or 10 years, 
then it is known as long term debt on the bonds as well. In the last section of the balance sheet, we have shareholders' equity. Share equity means part or share of these shareholders. So these shareholders are the are known as the owners of the business. Okay, and they have uh, this section includes the stock price and the capital stock. Capital stock of the company. How do we calculate the capital stock when the number of shares when the number of shares are multiplied with the per share value or with the per share value value of per share okay value of per share for example there are 100 shares and the value of one share is 10 rupees or 10 dollar then after multiplying this we get capital stock of one thousand dollars okay so this this is the basic structure of a balance sheet now look at the uh, detailed analysis of the balance sheet the items which are included in the balance sheet in the structure of the balance sheet are shown in this picture on the left side we have assets on the right side we have liabilities and owners equity we have uh, how many current assets we have we have three types of current assets cash accounts receivables and inventory of two years 2007 and 2008 you can see the change from 2007 to 2008 whether they have increased or decreased with the passage of time and then we have fixed assets fixed assets include the net fixed assets how do we calculate the net fixed assets if we subtract depreciation depreciation from the fixed assets we get the net fixed assets so they have increased from 2007 to 2008 then we have total assets if you get the sum of the current assets and the total fixed assets if you add them you get the total assets on the right side we have liabilities we have two current liabilities we have uh, one long term debt and in the owners equity section we have two important things one is the common stock and paid in surplus this is the common stock and paid in surplus and the other thing is retained earnings retained earning is what whatever the reserve which is set aside to meet the contingencies are known as retained earnings so we have two things on in, in the owners equity number one is uh, capital stock and the second thing is owners equity whenever the firm earns the revenue the retained earning will be increased whenever the firm have losses the retained earning will be reduced so if we add the total of uh, current liabilities and then total uh, sorry long-term liabilities and the third thing is honors equity if we sum these three things short-term liabilities long-term liabilities and honors equity we get the total liabilities and total honors equity so the sum of the two sides of assets and liabilities and honors equity will always remain same that's why we call it balance sheet. Hope I'm clear. Now let's look at the difference between the market value and book value. Let's try to understand the differences between the market value and book value. The balance sheet provides the book value of the assets liabilities and equity we have uh, recently looked into the values of the balance sheet it provides the book value of assets liabilities and equity the book values mean but the, the book value also means that all these three things which are mentioned in the accounting equation or the balance sheet equation are written on the on the on the value the value in the books of accounts the value in the books of accounts that's why we call them 
as the book value of assets, book value of liabilities, and book value of equity. Market value, let's discuss with the market value, is the price at which the assets, liabilities, or equity can actually be bought or sold. Market value is always, or usually, or normally different from the book value. Whenever you go to the market to sell an asset, it will, it will be sold at different price. The market will demand different price. The, liability, the demand for liabilities has a different value. And the equity or the share price in the market is always different or usually different. For example, you see in the business news that the stock prices of or blah 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 which are going up and the stock value of this this and this business are going down uh the down arrow shows um marked with the red the red down arrow shows the the downfall of the value on and on the other hand the green up arrow shows the increasing price of the share of any company and the blue straight line shows no change in the value uh, so this equity price uh, changes on daily basis in the in the in the in the equity market. Like uh, we have national markets and then in and and the international markets as well. So the market value always differs from the book value of assets, liabilities, or equity. So there are two important questions: market value and book value are often very different. Why? Uh, actually, the market value is determined on the basis of supply and demand of the market, but the book values are written in the books of accounts. And as per your transactions, as per your own business transactions, you decide your book value of assets, liabilities, and equity according to your profit and loss. But the market value is is is, is described according to the demand and supply of all those things in the market why and the second question important question is which is more important to the decision making process so whether the book value is important or the market value uh, remember the books the value which is written which is written in the books of accounts the decisions of a business are always taken on the basis of the book value which are mentioned in the books of accounts because a person will always think whatever he or she has in her pocket okay so book value is is more important for making decisions for making business decisions uh, and one important thing one exception is there if you are going to purchase or sell some new equity in the market then you will look at the share value or the uh, share value or market value or market price in the market then the market value becomes more important Here you can look into the balance sheet of uh, and you can have a look at the difference between the market and book value Here is a Lincoln corporation balance sheet. So It is described in the market value and book value. So it has networking capital of $400 but it has a market value of $600. It has net fixed assets of $700 in the book values in the books of accounts, but the actual market value is $1,000. And on the other side, it has liabilities in the books of account as $500. And the market value is also $500. And it has equity in the books of accounts as $600, but the value of equity in the market but the value of equity in the market is eleven hundred dollars It's much higher as compared to this so here you can look there you can look at it that the buyer in the market will always purchase the liabilities at its book value yeah so they want to buy these liabilities at its minimum value which are written in the books of accounts but on the other hand we have higher market assets value we have higher equity value in the market. So market value differs from the book value. So this is the basic crux of this slide. Now let's look at the second statement of, uh, uh, of accounting, the most important statement of accounting, second 
on the second number is known as the income statement or the statement of comprehensive income. Actually, the income statement is more like a video. It is not a snapshot. Remember, we have learned in the, in the definition of uh, balance sheet that it shows the snapshot of uh, a one point in time. But on the other hand, income statement is not a snapshot. Rather, it is a continuing video of the firm's operations, a video of firm's operations for a specified period of time. It is not a point of time, it is a period of time. So period of time starts and then ends somewhere. It starts from January and for example, it ends in December. So all these 12 months, the video of all these 12 months operations are described in the income statement, the firm's operations, okay? Second, you generally report revenues first uh, in the income statement, we first write revenues and then subtract expenses. We deduct or subtract expenses from the revenues to get profit or loss. While making the income statement, it is important to understand the matching principle. It says that according to generally accepted accounting principles, it says that recognize, recognize revenue when it is fully earned. You have to recognize the revenue when it is fully earned and match expenses required to generate revenue to the period of recognition. It says that in simple words, the revenue for example, you subtract expenses from the revenue to get a profit or loss, okay? For example, revenue and then you, you have many expenses, you subtract all those expenses from the revenue, you get the profit, okay? So, Remember, according to the matching principle, that 2020, sorry, it's not writing well, 2020 expenses must be deducted or must be reduced or must be subtracted from the revenues of the same 2020 year, okay? The expenses of the same year must be subtracted from the revenues of the same year. You cannot subtract the expenses of 2020 from the year 2019 or 2018. Otherwise, it will not match with the same revenue. It will generate bogus results, okay? It is important to understand. If we have a look at the uh, at the preparation of income statement, it says U.S. Corporation 2008 income statement written in the millions of dollars. We have net sales, which is the revenue source of revenue is the sales. So this is the revenue, $1,509. Then we have all types of costs. Then we have one important major direct cost, which is CGS or cost of goods sold. You subtract it and then you subtract depreciation. You get EBIT, earning before interest and tax. It is known as EBIT, earning before interest and tax. It's very important. Then it, it has two things, interest and tax. First, you will subtract the interest. It is $70 and then you get the taxable income and after that you will subtract the taxes so these are the taxes and then you will get net income after deducting interest and tax you will get earning after tax so this in this income is available to eat so this income is divided into two parts some part of this net income will be given as a dividend to the shareholders and the remaining part will be transferred to the retained earnings as a reserve for the business. It's very important to understand. So it has two parts. The net income will be divided into, into two streams. One stream will go to the dividend or shareholders and the second stream will go to the reserve of the business. So this will be distributed among dividend to the shareholders to the company and three zero nine dollars will be will be put as a reserve to make some future investments or to meet some future contingencies. 
Okay, dear students, the next uh, concept for understanding point of view is taxes. The one thing about taxes we can rely on is that they will always be changing. Yeah, it's an important phrase which is written usually for the taxes that they are always changing. But you know that they are not certain the government is maybe increasing or decreasing the tax rates. Uh, the, there are different tax policy policies that are issued on every budget year. We have marginal versus average tax rates. Marginal means the percentage paid on the next dollar earned. Every extra dollar year that you earn has uh, a, has a percentage on that extra dollar that will be go that will be gone to the government to department for the welfare of the society so marginal mean every additional tax that is paid that is paid on every additional dollar earned is known as marginal tax average tax the formula of average tax is the tax bill the total tax bill divided by total taxable income whatever is your taxable income it will come under the denominator and the denominator is the tax bill and we have also other types of taxes such as uh, progressive taxes, or regressive taxes, or flat rate taxes. So there are different types of taxes. Now we will try to understand with an example, example of uh, marginal and uh, average tax rates. Suppose your, your firm earns $4 million in taxable income and suppose tax rate is 34 percent number one question what is the firm's tax liability so if you look at the page 31 table uh, in the book of rose westerfield and jordan of corporate finance then you will look that on the four million slab on the four million dollar on the four million dollar you will find a rate of 34%. So for example, if the tax rate is 34%, what will be the tax liability? So if you multiply 4 million with 34%, you will find 1.36 million. So $1.36 million will be your tax liability. Okay, students, now reconsider it, reconsider the problem. If you, uh, for the first calculation of the tax liability, if you multiply 4 million with the 34% or 0.34% of the tax rate, you will get, you multiply $4 million with the 34% tax rate, you will get $1.36 million is known as tax liability. This is your tax liability. Now, what is average tax rate? How do we calculate the average tax rate is calculated in the previous example. This is our actually uh, taxable uh, uh, tax liability. This is our tax liability. So if we divide this tax liability 1.36 with, with the total taxable income, which is $4 million, we get 0 0.34, which is again 34%, which is the 34% of 0.34 is the average tax rate. And what will be the marginal tax rate? If you look at the table in the 31, uh, I'm gonna show you uh, the table. Okay, let's look into the table. Uh, in this table is showing the taxable income and the tax rate. If you look at this slab rate, uh, 4 million is coming in this slab. So if you are earning every extra dollar above 4 million, you will get the same rate. You will get the same 34%. You will get every extra dollar upon the 4 million. For example, 4 million, $1, 4 million, $2, 4 million, $3, uh, up, to, up to the 10 millions. Up to the 10 million, uh, you, from 4 million to 10 million, you are earning every extra dollar or an end. And on, on that every extra dollar, you are charging 
34% to pay the government as a tax. But if you earn an, a one extra dollar, which increases from 10 million to 10 million one dollar, then the rate will be changed from 34% to 35%, okay? But here in our example, the question is that uh, what will be the marginal tax rate? So you will say that on every extra dollar above $4 million, we have the same 34% rate, okay? Now, if you are considering a project that will increase the firm's taxable income by $1, why $1 million, what tax rate should you use in your analysis? So if, if, if the taxable income is increased by $1 million, we have $5 million, $5 million will have the same 34% rate, okay? Now, for, for the understanding of the cash flows, uh, actually the cash flow statement does not provide the actual uh, uh, desirable amount of uh, figures that we, uh, we are in need as a finance manager to work on and to take important decisions. So that's why we calculate some more, cal uh, some more, some more important figures to take important decisions. So actually what you have to do is, um, uh, you have to cram or you have to learn these formulas these are uh, these uh, these formulas are derived for uh, for the equation so what is a cash flow equation the cash flow identity or cash flow equation is cash flow from assets is equal to cash flow to creditors and cash flow to shareholders so this this equation has three things cash flow to creditors cash flow to shareholders or stockholders and the method is cash flow from assets so the left hand side must always be equal to the right hand side okay it's important so all these three things are calculated here uh, look at here this is the cash flow from assets cash flow to creditors and cash flow to stockholders so this equation is derived from here cash flow to stockholders So cash flow to creditors is calculated as point number three, as in point number three. And how do we calculate the left-hand side, which is cash flow from assets? The formula is given below. So let's first look into the cash flow from assets. The formula is cash flow from assets is equal to operating cash flow, number one, it's A, and minus net capital spending, it's B, minus changes in networking capital, this is C, okay? And how you will calculate the A, B, and C, this is given below. This is A, this is B, and this is C, okay? So operating cash flow is calculated as EBIT, we have already learned that EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes, and second thing is B, B is net capital spending. It is calculated as our ending net fixed assets. We have the closing fixed net fixed assets then minus beginning net fixed assets plus depreciation. And C, third thing, changes in networking capital, which is calculated as changes in networking capital is equal to ending networking capital minus beginning networking capital. And they actually networking capital is calculated as current assets minus current liabilities, okay? So this is the same simple formula. Now let's go to the right hand side, cash flow to creditors. It is calculated as cash flow to creditors or bone holders is equal to is equal to interest paid minus net new borrowing. How many new bor borrowing a firm has taken, it will be subtracted from the interest. And the second thing is cash flow from uh, cash flow to stockholders or owners, or cash flow to shareholders is calculated as cash flow to stockholders is equal to dividend paid, whatever the pay, uh, whatever the dividend you're paying to the stockholders. Uh, we will subtract net new equity raised from the dividend paid. Okay, net new equity raised will be subtracted from the dividends paid. So this is the cash flow identity. Uh, uh, we will get two answers for the right hand side. This is for the right hand side and we will get one answer for left hand side 
and these two sides must always be equal as 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 presented in the cash flow identity okay so uh, it is important to understand these formulas because figures will be given to you in the balance sheet and the income statement form and you will pick those figures to calculate your answers okay hope i am clear take care take care of yourself and your family in this covid pandemic situation take care bye bye